What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Mayor J Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, there will be no origin story for Superman Legacy. And another announcement, he is following in the footsteps of Christopher Nolan and shooting this in IMAX format. Two things for each of those announcements. For the origin part, Brian, is, this is uh, the right move, obviously, right? We're, 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 if you don't know how Superman became Superman, I'm sorry, Google or ChatGPT or whatever you want to do, but just don't ask no, no human about it. Find out for yourself. So I don't really think we need to revisit, perhaps touch on certain things that uh, brings, that triggers some memory or inspiration for him to do uh, a certain deed or whatever that causes him to go back in time and, and think about whatever, right? We can go do flashbacks and stuff like that, but having to go back over and over retelling that story is just a waste of time. I'm as Brian. I think we've seen a lot done with IMAX, especially with Christopher Nolan uh, adopting that format. Um, that's beautiful. But what I'm mostly interested, Brian, and you and I have discussed it in certain parts with Black Adam and, and uh, uh, it's funny because Tracy and I were talking about uh, Christopher Reeve Superman. And if you look back, the, the special effects weren't great, Brian. No. They weren't great at all. But yet, when you see that movie, you feel something. Uh, and certainly Christopher Reeve embodied that character. But what I'm looking, Brian, to see is something different with regards to flying. There were certain elements in Black Adam that looked pretty cool, mostly when he was sort of just levitating and, uh, but flying, we've seen it all, Brian. Um, so those are the two things I'm looking to, uh, uh, certainly not re go over the, the origin story and certainly with the VFX and his flying abilities, all this new stuff, we have to look at something different. Your thoughts? <clears throat> well, 10 out of 10 on both of these for me. Um, I think no origin story is a really key decision. I think at this point, both for Superman and for Batman, I think it's important that we just let those go and trust that the broader mainstream audience, which isn't a comic book superhero audience, actually knows the basics of those. Yeah. I really think they're common knowledge. Like, yeah. And I think it's really important because we know that time is of the essence with these films. You know, yeah, you know, things like Oppenheimer, because it's Christopher Nolan, can get away with three hours. But you can't be coming with no three hours Superman legacy. That, mm. that thing has to be tight. Yeah. I think it's got to be 215 or less. And the reality is, if you choose to tell the origin story, just think about it from that perspective. How much screen time do you have to devote to it to get him from Krypton to Smallville? And as, as you, that's probably 15 minutes. If you're really yeah. going to do Krypton's destruction, his flight to Kansas, you know, being found in the field, his early yeah. days, that's 15 minutes. Yeah, think about that. Yeah. You need that 15 minutes to build your world. You don't need to tell people something they already know. And the reality is, I don't think visually you could depict it in a way where people would say, wow, I never thought about his origin that way before. I actually think, you know, We'll talk about, man. I actually think what Zack Snyder did in Man of Steel was probably the last time you can really, like, he reinvented Krypton itself. And I actually thought it was at least interesting. It got my attention visually. That's about the only thing you can do. Now that that's been done, like, versus obviously the, the Marlon Brando, um, Richard Donner interpretation. Like, Who I don't, I don't know. Well, they're too, uh, I actually like Zack's a little more. Am I allowed to say that? Mm -hmm. I like the idea that it was, I like the idea of them as like an explorer people that was sort of a little more martial versus like godlike, which is kind of what Donner did, right? Donner's is very much like heaven, Olympus style. I like the majestic aspect of Krypton. Okay, interesting. 
Yeah. The future is just made me think. It made me like when he when I saw it, I was like, oh, I never I never thought of Krypton in this way. And I kind of was like, I'm sort of with that, that it's different yeah. in that in that way. Yeah. Um, but again, I don't need to see a third iteration. It would add nothing. Um, and so I'm much more excited that those 15 minutes or whatever it would be will go to storytelling around this Superman, this metropolis you know these characters and i think that's a huge decision and like i said it will help keep the length of this film down to a level that i think it has to be to really capture people's imagination so that's like number one imax to be clear on the imax thing because james gunn was asked on threads is this being shot for imax and he said yes i do not think he's shooting the entire film with an imax camera i do want to say i'd be shocked because that's not something he's ever done Nolan is really the only filmmaker who does do that. I think Denny Villeneuve has started to move in that direction. Um, he's shooting some of Dune and things like that with IMAX. But the idea of putting, like, say, all two hours on IMAX, only Nolan's been able to do that. And with a Superman film, it's actually very hard because those cameras are still very big. They're still very unwieldy. It's not suitable necessarily for um, some of the shots. And in fact, in the Dark Knight trilogy, where Nolan started to do this, you could, if you went and saw that film in the IMAX, you would see the aspect ratio change. Uh, you yeah. would see the scenes that were shot with the camera and the scenes that weren't. So that's kind of what I expect here is that they will utilize the camera for effect. And I actually trust Gunn visually. That means he's thinking big, which I like. Yeah. He's thinking sweeping cinematic. He's thinking with that eye that wasn't necessary for Guardians. That makes me encouraged that he, he actually yeah. thought of it. The other thing is the studio, no doubt, would have gone to him and said, there's dollars to be had on IMAX screens. Those are premium cost screens. Give me something that I can sell on yeah. IMAX. And Superman is an ideal character for that. Certainly, certainly, certainly. Brian, the, the, uh, the anticipation for <clears throat> what Gunn may or may not show for Comic-Con, he's talking about not showing anything or not, nothing coming soon, but we're certain that he is going to show something to get the anticip uh, anticipation rolling even further. Um, there isn't any, anything that I haven't already said about the film, Brian, that I'm expecting. Um, if you want to listen to my thoughts on that, you can certainly go back to our pr prior shows, Brian. Um, anything new um, to go over before we wrap well, this one? I think what's one of the things that's funny is he got asked he got asked by someone whether batman was in the film and obviously wow. he said he said no and like the reaction was like disappointment and i'm like what are you people talking about <laughs> like what are you like that's the last character i want to see in superman legacy but this is this is why brian that this is why you have people like james gunn and and people who have certainly the vision of seeing all that come together but how to go about it is a different story people just want to see if you if people want to see street fighter people want to see mortal kombat they want to see all the characters in one film and then destroy it later when it's whack and people are fighting i just i don't understand an audience that says look we need we need to reground and reinvent and sort of reinvigorate Clark Kent and Superman on the big screen. The, the, the person who would be the biggest distraction, literally, from that process is Bruce Wayne. Yes, 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 yes. Like, I, I, there's no way around that. Yes. If you want, look, look, do we want World's Finest someday? Yeah. Absolutely. But you know why World's Finest was great? even if we're thinking about it in the animated world, it's because Batman the Animated Series rocked. Superman the Animated Series was off and running, and then they brought them together, and those episodes were fire. You can't be like, hey, I got this brand new David's Corn Sweat, and oh, I'm sorry, David, move over. I got, I got to make 45, 50 minutes of Batman footage for this film. Like, come on, it's just not going to work. I mean, certainly, Brian. Let's say... Like a cut, uh, not a uh, end credit or mid credit scene. A plane arrives, and the person stepping off the off the plane is Bruce Wayne, and is Alan Richardson, Bruce Wayne. People will go nuts. Absolutely, people will go nuts. But if you wanted to do that at the 
very end of a movie, go ahead. But for this particular film right here, Brian, you Superman has been a joke. I even talk to people uh, when we talk about uh, Super Friends and, yo, F Superman is the first dude to get got. <laughs> he's the first guy to eliminate, yo. He's always, somebody's always saving Superman. And we can't have that. Superman got to be the man. He's the one. So if he, like we've all been saying, if this doesn't go well, so if this Superman album doesn't go well, S Superman has to be the focal point. Yeah, and it's and the irony is, and I'll give Zach a little more praise here, uh, even as I criticize him, which is, you know, you remember in Man of Steel, there is a brief shot of a Wayne Enterprises satellite. I have no problem. I had no problem with it at the time. I have no problem if they do that in this film, if the Wayne Enterprises logo makes, a, makes an appearance. Great, that acknowledges that Bruce Wayne is out there somewhere, but don't, don't have him show his mug, let alone his cape in this film. And, 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 and the thing is, it's interesting because Zack Snyder, ironically, after everything Henry Cavill went through, has always been so public in defending Henry as like his Superman, his Superman, his Superman. But I would love, I would love to get in a room with Zack and say, if he was your Superman from day one, why didn't you trust him? Why didn't you trust him with your script? Because we're sitting here. He's the great. He is still going to be the great. What if and unknown? You talk about Superman being eliminated. He was eliminated by his own scriptwriter in that series because he wasn't asked to be the true lead of his film. I'm referring to his lack of speaking lines in Man of Steel. He is very much a visual and a physical character who obviously grunts and makes, makes screams and that sort of stuff. But if you actually count the number of words that an adult, that an adult fully grown Clark Kent or Kal-El speaks in the film. It's, two, it's like two pages. It's, like, yeah. it's not much. It's not cons considering the magnitude of this character, right? This is not supposed to be like, you know, the, the silent warrior. Like he's supposed to have a fully formed personality, you know, that sort of mixes both civilizations. Remember, he's he's supposed to be sitting in the fortress with the knowledge of the twenty eight known gal twenty eight known galaxies. Like then he's raised by you know Jonathan and Martha Kent. Like the idea that he wouldn't have much to say is kind of yeah. far fetched. And so that's why to me it was always interesting that you know Henry visually is very powerful. I think at a lot of points in that movie, but he really isn't asked to do much verbally. And I always yeah. I would love to know why. In, and I don't accept the explanation that, well, we would have gotten to that in Man of Steel, too. Um, and if anything, in Batman vs. Superman, they marginalized him even more, right? Yeah. To give Affleck lines and, and ultimately to give Gal Gadot lines. Like, so it's just one of those, like, I never quite got it. Like, I never quite killed, got why they, what they, they were afraid of. And they killed Jimmy Olsen from Jump Street. <laughs> yeah. Um, Again, Superman Legacy is, is a movie that we are waiting for very, very excitingly. And I for, bet you David Corden Sweat has a lot of lines. Oh, yeah, Brian. I'm more, Brian, to be honest, certainly I'm interested in the, in the Superman look. I think it's going to be very epic. It's going to be very different than Henry Cavill. I think he's still going to be huge, but he is going to be more... He's going to be different. He's going to be different, reminiscent, but different and more Superman like, I would I would say, in certain poses. I think he is going to have a look, Brian, that will be very different than what we've seen as Superman and as Clark Kent. Are we going to continue on with the farce of believing that Lois Lane doesn't know who Superman is as Clark Kent? People, that is very interesting to me. How will that go? He's only been in it for two years. Does she already know what's going on? That'll be interesting for me to know. The chemistry, for me, I am wanting it to be only with Superman and that relationship with Clark Kent. It's very different, but still interesting. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of Superman Legacy's 
um, not going in the, in the direction of an origin story and, and visually uh, giving us an IMAX uh, format for certain, perhaps for certain shots, certainly not for all. Um, and you let us know what you, what you guys are expecting to see with Superman's abilities. Let us know in the comments section below and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. Um, hold on. What we the show goes on! Yeah!